Yeah. 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 What an introduction. So I come out onto the street guys to start filming and filming what I'm doing. It was someone just coming behind. Yes, yes. Ah, okay, I saw your video that time when I was in Dubai. So that time I check your face. I think you are the YouTuber because this is GoPro, no? Yes. Okay. So you are here coming for roaming or uh, just coming? Yes, I'm staying with my friend Anmo. Um, I'm here till this weekend, okay. and then we're flying to uh, to Delhi for a, for a bit of time over there as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I've been in India for about a month, so uh, and I want to come back already. Ah, okay. Very much so. So yeah, so how's it here? Oh, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Just around the corner. Yeah. How many days here? Um, I've been here for two days so far. I just two days. Yeah. So you're rolling around. Yeah. I love the place. Everyone's so friendly, and uh, everyone wants to get involved and say hello on the camera and stuff. So, uh, so yeah. I'm gonna carry on walking and filming, and I'll see you in a bit. Yeah, of course. Okay. Bye for now. Okay, so I've been mistaken for another YouTuber. I don't know who that was because we haven't actually posted any videos yet. But, so, I paid the equivalent of about 30 pence to feed a cow. In the process of trying to build my introduction. So, anyway, back to the task at hand. So, I'm in Nalasapara. Oh, hang on. I'm in Nalasapara, which is in northern Mumbai, on the outskirts, effectively. And I'm sure you're all thinking, why am I wandering around here? So, my name's Dave. I have a small garage in Western Superman in England. Um, a few years ago, I started making art um, pieces from scrap car parts. So I started another small business called Death Metal, largely because I'm deaf, as you can see. So, in the last year or so, nearing the age of 40, I've got to that wonderful point of your ex existential crisis, midlife crisis, um, amongst a whole load of other things. But I had a there was a period where I. I I suppose I went a transformation in my mind. I realised that um, a lot of things in my life hadn't really made sense up until this point. Like school kids. A lot of things in my life hadn't really made sense to me up until this point. Um, until I started getting involved in um, various charitable acts. Which... Towards the end of last year, I, I do hope you can hear me because it's like literally school kicking out time, everyone's on the street here. So, um, middle of last year, no, about August time, I heard about a lady in America via a friend who was having to pay for her own cancer treatment. And her story touched me greatly, so. I decided, given that I found out they were holding a, uh, a cancer benefit, so I've gone the wrong way here, let me cross over and go back up again. They were holding a cancer benefit to raise money to pay for her um, 
her treatment. So I decided to make several bunches of stainless steel roses and ship them to her in California for the auction. Now, I figured my bits and pieces would probably sell for much more than I could ever afford to um, actually send. So many people here. Um, so yes, I shipped these roses, stainless steel roses, handmade, to America at my own cost. And I did say, look, I don't want any publicity, I just want, want the right thing to happen at your end. I covered all the costs. So, the evening of the auction comes and goes, and uh, she contacts me and informed me that the rose is actually made. Jeez, it's so noisy. So yeah, she contacts me and lets me know that the uh, roses actually fetched $1,400, which absolutely stunned me. Um, back where I live, I'd be hard pressed to give my stuff away. Um, I've had a lot of negativity from people around me um, and potential customers. It seems to be with artwork. People place no intrinsic value on your time, your effort, your skill, any of it. So to get a result like that for uh, the lady in California was humbling, but it led me to realise that there was potentially a better way of actually doing a charitable act. Rather than sending money into a, a large organisation and you never knowing where it actually ends up or where it goes, the fact that I directly managed to get the money exactly where it was needed was a very humbling experience so that got me thinking but I wanted to help more people in that kind of way with my artwork in some meaningful manner so roll on a couple of months and thanks to the power of social media a random dogger enjoying the sun a random scroll through Instagram led me to a lady who's now a very good friend of mine and is the reason why I'm actually here. What about? Hello. 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 So yes, uh, a lady who's now actually a very good friend of mine and is the reason why I'm here in Nala Sapara. So I found Anmol Rodriguez who has the I suppose unfortunate title of being India's youngest acid attack survivor. Now her story is it's an emotional one for me to explain because it just doesn't make any sense why someone would do this. But uh, suffice to say her father threw acid over her and her mother when she was two months old. Which, I can't have my own children, but I do have a healthy dose of empathy about me and that situation just brought me to my knees. Um, the fact that she then had to basically live in a hospital for five years, being treated and having surgeries, and uh, eventually went to an orphanage, successfully completed school, um, speaks very good English and then went on to Mumbai University where she got a uh, degree in uh, computing. So her dream at that point was to get involved uh, working in, a, in an office doing computer stuff. So in around 2016 she was called into the office and the, uh, the manager there, people can be very blunt in, uh, in India, the, um, the manager there basically said, look, love, you're going to have to sort your face out, you're scaring me. Now, she does have very horrendous um, scars and injuries all over her. Um, she's blind in one eye. Let's try this way to be quieter. She's blind in one eye, um, has limited mobility um, in one of her hands. But her story 
stop me in my tracks and um, when I read up more about her I I spent most of an evening literally in, in tears but I just couldn't comprehend how any of that could actually have occurred but yet someone's spirit can actually get through that so it left me thinking oh, hang on a minute I'm here at Western Supermare thinking that my life sucks and I've got all these problems and woes and actually there's someone else on the other side of the world who's endured that and that shifted my perspective massively um, so the next thing that happened was that evening I sent her a, I found her on Instagram and sent her a message I could see she had about 120,000 followers so I wasn't expecting a reply and yet a couple of hours later my phone goes and it was her and she just got in from a, an award ceremony or a party with friends and said look it's very late here I'll talk to you tomorrow so we struck up a conversation and uh, basically I offered my assistance in any meaningful way I could and um, she accepted and was absolutely bang up for the idea. So, fast forward to now, early February 2020, uh, I landed in Mumbai on the 1st, spent a few days um, getting my head around India and working out what's going on, um, getting to know people and obviously met up with Anmol on Monday and um, so I'm here to work with her to establish a uh, foundation or a charity. Hello! I'm here, read my name. You want it? Establish a uh, foundation for a charity or whatever mechanism suits aiding people the best. Things are so, so fluid at the moment, things are actually developing on literally an hourly basis. Um, but the idea is that uh, we'll use my artwork to benefit the uh, lady survivors that she knows in Mumbai uh, and uh, have a foundation that can actually um, help pay for the um, medical care. The, um, the operations here are very expensive, there's obviously no NHS, so people are kind of on their own um, with these things. But yeah, we want to set up this system to uh, basically help out as many of these women in Mumbai as possible because there's nothing here for them. Um, so yes, hence why I'm wandering around being befriended by folk in Ala Sahara um, in the baking heat, it's 31 degrees at the moment, which is rather nice. So, uh, so yes, that's kind of the, uh, the crux of my side of the story, I guess, in terms of how we got here. And Anna will be sharing hers shortly. So, um, so yeah, that's why I'm here, folks. I'm here for a month, and in that time frame, we aim to get the, uh, the framework of all of this sorted. Got a whole bunch of um, meetings, all manner of things on the go, uh, which we're working through. Amongst a few fun little jolly jaunts and other bits and pieces, we are going to head to Delhi at one point as well um, to meet up with some of our friends there. But um, yeah. There we go. So, I'm Dave, that's my introduction. I'll catch you in a bit. <laughs>